Part 32, let's do it. Welcome back guys. In the last part, we went and built out this SwiftUI based settings view. We're gonna actually work on tapping on each of these and handling the interactions. So drop a like down below. Let me know in the comments if you've made it this far and let's continue. So you guys recall that we used SwiftUI to build out this view. Now traditionally what you would wanna do is use something like a navigation link, which is a SwiftUI construct or you know, some sort of binding or state object to figure out you know, what is selected. But if you remember, we are actually using UIKit for the actual settings controller. So if I stop our app and open this up on the right hand side, I'll also get rid of our canvas here, this right panel, since we don't need it anymore. We want to basically get the actual interaction, the tap on one of these particular uh, H stacks out of Swift UI and back to UIKit. So let's figure out how on earth we're gonna do that because it doesn't sound that straightforward, but in fact, it actually is. So let's jump back into our uh, settings here. And what I will go ahead and do is, instead of assigning this controller up here, we are going to actually make this a UI hosting controller optional. We're gonna make it mutable, AKA make it a var. And over here, we will create said controller. So I'll actually say let settings Swift UI controller equals this right here. And once we've added everything onto the screen, we can just retain it in the global scope. What does that actually allow us to do? So this is yelling at me because this takes a generic, the content view type. So we do need to pass that in here. So let me see what that type is. That'll be this view here. We need to specify that this is a hosting controller for the settings view, which is the Swift UI view, and that error will go away. But to take a step back, why did we actually do that? Well, the reason we did that is we want to create a additional parameter in our settings view, which will actually be a closure that takes in you know, the selection, right? So maybe when we tap on one of these horizontal stacks, what we'll do is we're gonna say there's gonna be an on tap gesture. And when we tap on it, ideally what I want to be able to do is say something along the lines of view model, did tap, uh, did tap option maybe, and we want to pass in whatever option was selected and we can do that by either passing it in, but if you think about it, each of these cell view models is specific to a given, uh, a given settings option. So we could design it that way. So let's come back to the controller and let's see what the best way to design this is. So at the moment, we're mapping all of our uh, options. In all cases, we're mapping all of them to a particular uh, view model type. So the other thing that I will do here is inside of this particular view model, we'll jump to this. We are not only going to take a type, but I will also go ahead and uh, do the following. So we'll say this is on tap handler. Let's make sure we spell that correctly, on tap handler. This will be an escaping closure and we'll return basically pass in nothing, returning void. And actually, instead of passing in nothing, what I'll do is I'll pass in the type since it is privatized. So we'll go and do that here. And we just want to hang on to this closure. And you guys will see how this kind of manifests momentarily. So bear with me here. This is going to be that closure. We'll say on tap handler will be this thing here. And we should see this error go away for the assignment, hopefully. Okay, looking pretty good. Now this is yelling at me that this is no longer uh, able to conform to equatable or hashable. So let's get rid of this. We actually don't need that. And it still looks like this is yelling at me. So the reason it's yelling at me is because it's saying it can't make, let's go ahead and compile. Okay, so this actually isn't yelling at me at anymore. What's yelling at me now is the fact that it can't actually instantiate this uh, because we're not passing in that on tap handler. So let's do that. On tap handler, we'll hit enter. This will be the option that we've actually selected. And then here we can do something, right? So we're just going to say print out uh, option dot uh, the display title. Whenever we tap it, we'll print it out. 
So let's jump back to our SwiftUI view. And in this ONTAP handler, we can now actually call it. We can say viewmodel.ONTAPHandler. And let's make sure this isn't actually uh, private. We do want it to be public, so we can call it. And to call it, we need to pass in the given type. So here I will say this is viewmodel.type. And I think this is also uh, going to need to be public. So let me jump back into this. Let's jump back into here and we do need to make this public here so we can actually find you know um, access it what it is so here if we build it looks like we don't have any more issues here except for the fact that in our uh, actual uh, uh, content view for our preview we need to actually specify this I'll say option in and we don't need to actually do anything there and now we are compiling so let me build and run and in our simulator, when I tap on one of these options, we expect to see that option printed out here. So let's go ahead and tap on maybe rate app and we get rate app there. Let's further tap on this and we get that. One thing you might notice is when I tap on the outside content, sometimes it doesn't print and that's actually intentional because if you set a background color on this, you'll see now let's actually do it together so you can see it. The background, let's make this red. You'll see that this horizontal stack in which all this stuff is going is actually not going to the edge of the entire uh, you know, horizontal available space. To, so to make sure that it actually fills it up, what you can do is add a spacer. And that'll basically push the size of the view all the way to the edge, such that even if you tap over here on the rightmost side, of, let's say a rate app let's go ahead and try that tap on that over there we should actually get uh, the print now it looks like we're actually not getting the print so let me try that one more time all right so we are now getting the print out so awesome so we're able to tap on this and get the actual printed uh, results to the particular uh, back to the particular um, callers the controller the UI kit class in this case one other thing that I let me, I'm gonna go ahead and give this a shot is uh, we're gonna come back into here and in our settings controller, now that we actually have this printed out, instead of printing it out, we wanna actually handle it. So let's create another function. And what we're gonna give a shot to is actually switching over each of these uh, options and handling them. So handle, tap, option will be RM setting option. And we're gonna see how fast we can actually get through this. And then in here we can say self dot handle this. Option is going to be option. Now we don't want to uh, cause a retain cycle. So we're gonna capture weak uh, self, self in a weak capacity. And let's see, what else do we want to do? So this should all be on the main thread. So the way you can actually verify that, and this is a pro tip, you can actually say guard that thread.current uh, is main. So let's see, is main, I believe that exists on here. Yep, is main thread. And this is just to make sure that when we do any UI interaction, I'm 99% sure this function will always be called on the main thread, but just in case we don't wanna accidentally run this on a background thread, since we are gonna interact with UI, we'll go and switch over the options. And for each of these, you wanna do something. So for rating the app, we wanna show a app rating prompt. So I'm gonna say show prompt, we'll break in here for now. For contact us, maybe we wanna open up some websites. For terms, we perhaps also want to open up a website. So let's actually figure out uh, how we can write a reusable function for that. Also for uh, the API reference, privacy, view series. For all of these, we actually want to open up a website. So what I'll do is for each of these options, we're gonna add a, another computed property. And this will be the target URL of type URL optional. We'll switch once more on self and we're gonna return a URL that we want to show for the particular, um, the, the, the case basically. So for rate app, we don't wanna show one. So we'll say return nil. For contact us for now, what I'll actually just do is link to the iOS Academy website. And I'll do this for terms as well. And actually I think this is my URL for terms. And I wanna say there's one for privacy as well. And it's been a while since I actually look at, took a look at those, so maybe my URLs are incorrect. For the API reference, we're actually just going to copy and paste the URL for the Rick and Morty API. All right, awesome. 
For viewing series, we want to post a link here to the particular series. So let's actually open up YouTube and head on over to the channel. And what I'll actually do in here is jump to the playlists. So let's see where playlists are. We'll jump to playlist here. And we're gonna jump into the build full Rick and Morty app. I will pause this ad that pops up. We'll further jump into here. And this is the URL we wanna use for the viewing of a series. All right, paste that in. And finally, to view the code, I'm going to jump on over to Google and we're gonna look up the repo. We'll say Rick and Morty app and hopefully Google has uh, We'll be able to index it and find it. If not, we'll actually look for it manually. So I'll jump into GitHub. Actually, I need to be logged in. So I'll jump into my account here. And here is the Rick and Morty app repo. It is a public repo. If you haven't seen it yet, take a look. That's where all the code is going. And we'll toss that in here like so. So back in our controller, what we can actually do is instead of even switching on these, we can do as follows. Now we're passing in an option. So we're saying if let URL is option.targeturl, we know we want to open website. Else, what we're going to do is if the option equals rate app, which is the only one, we need to show rating prompt. So let's actually open the website since we're doing good on time and let's actually just get that to show up and then we will continue accordingly. So to open up a website, it's particularly simple. We wanna open it in app. In other words, we don't wanna send the user to um, you know, Safari or link them out. We wanna just have them stay in the app. So we're gonna import a framework called Safari Services. And Safari Services gives us access to a controller that looks basically like Safari. And that is going to be SF Safari view controller. And you can create this with a URL. Now we just want to show it. Now we do want it to slide in from the right hand side, but it is important to note you can't actually push a Safari view controller. You do need to actually use the present API. And we're going to say present this with an animation and go ahead and build and run. And let's see if this whole thing actually works. So we'll go into here and let's see, I wanna view the app code. It'll open this up and boom, we've got the app code. Let's find the reference to the API. Uh, rather, this is a series, I should say. There's a series. Here's a reference to the API. Beautiful. Let's try our privacy policy. Does this exist? It in fact does on the iOS Academy website. Terms of service, awesome. Contact us, just goes to the website. I wanna say I have a contact page in here too. Uh, maybe I don't on the mobile ver variant of the website, but we'll go ahead and go to rate app and nothing happens. So all of these are actually looking good instead of rating the app. So that's all I've got for this part. We've actually just to have finished the screen in the next video, we'll hook up this rating, uh, the app, uh, option here, and then we'll continue from there. So drop a like before clicking away. Thanks so much for sticking around. If you really made it this far, it's been a lot of videos and it's been a lot of fun, uh, onwards. So I'll see you in the next part.